what's up it's Hannah and welcome back to my channel and hello if you are new here today's video is super exciting this video has been super super requested this is gonna be a part of my house hatchling series I'm gonna be taking y'all step by step of hatching a batch of chicken eggs I will have the first video you should watch in the series if you're just first getting started linked in the description box talking about you know getting started purebred chickens separating your breeds all of that kind of stuff in today's video I'm gonna be talking about what eggs I choose to hatch like how you go about choosing your eggs that you are going to put in your incubator I'm gonna talk about how I store the eggs before putting them in the incubator I'll be talking about your temperature and humidity when you're setting up your incubator what it needs to be at and then in the next video I'm gonna be showing y'all the progress of the eggs and what they should look like during the incubation period and what they shouldn't look like and all of that kind of stuff be sure you give this video a thumbs up if you're excited and you enjoy today's video and don't forget to click on the subscribe button to see more of my future videos and if you have on that notification bell let me know down in the comments for a chance to win a notification shout out on my channel okay so the first thing I'm going to talk about are the eggs that you are going to want to use to incubate and the eggs you're not going to want to use to incubate when I'm looking for eggs to incubate I'm of course looking at what breed of chickens I want to have hatch out but also I want to make sure that I'm using clean normal looking eggs you don't want to use any like odd shaped eggs now if your eggs just have like a little bit of dirt or mud on them or whatever like you can dust them off that's fine but if they have like a ton of poop on them you don't want to really use like eggs like that that are like super nasty because you do not want to wash your eggs before putting them in the incubator when a hen lays an egg it has something on the outside of the shell called the bloom which is like a film that protects the inside of the Egg. eggs are porous so bacteria and stuff can seep into the egg after you wash them that's why you don't want to wash them before putting them in the incubator because bacteria can seep inside of the egg and it can cause the chick to get sick and stuff there are a few different reasons why you would have dirty eggs sometimes you'll just have chickens that get in their nesting box with mud on their feet or dirt a lot of the times really dirty eggs is a sign of your chickens having worms if your chickens are in a really clean environment it's not really muddy outside and stuff so that could be a sign that you need to deworm your chickens or your nesting boxes or their surroundings could just be dirty so you might need to clean out your nesting boxes or your coop or they might just have muddy feet because it's been raining right here I have two different eggs both of them are from one of my Easter eggers this egg right here I'm gonna be incubating it does have a little bit of dirt on it but I kind of dusted it off and it's fun this egg right here is kind of weird shaped it's pretty long this egg is also from one of my easter eggers and i'm not gonna be using it well i just dropped it and broke it anyway <laughs> i was about to show y'all something on it it's very long looking and whenever i took a closer look at it it had like some discoloration on the tip of it and it was kind of cracked on the tip so she had like problems laying this. So it wasn't like a normal egg. So you definitely want to like look at your eggs and make sure they're normal looking. Don't have like cracks in them or anything like that. I was going to get a close up of the tip of it, but I dropped it. This is also an egg I'm going to be incubating. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous Moran egg. Super, super dark red chocolate brown. It's a normal looking egg it's super clean that's what you'll want to be looking for and i wouldn't use eggs that are like super light that feel like they're about to break and that feel like super thin you don't want to use an egg from a pullet to incubate a pullet is a hen under the age of a year old because their bodies have not really gotten used to laying a lot of young hens lay a lot of double yolks normally you're not going to have like twins like it doesn't really work like that you want to use eggs from hens that have been laying for a while and also young pullets also lay a lot of weird shaped eggs because they're trying to get in the hang of laying. A lot of people will just grab their chicken's first egg and incubate it, but you don't really want to do that. I know it's so hard to have patience, but if you're starting a flock from scratch, it takes a lot of patience. You don't want to use weird shaped eggs because they probably just won't develop properly and then it will harm the chick. So you just want to use like a good seasoned hen. That does not sound good. We shouldn't say seasoned. Um, 
Okay, now I'm gonna talk about storing your eggs and what you do with them before you set them in the incubator. I know a lot of people get super confused by this because they feel like the incubation period starts as soon as the chicken lays the egg and they're freaking out trying to keep the eggs warm and everything. But the incubation period does not start until you put them in an incubator that is already set up to temperature. So what I normally do is I collect eggs for about a week before I put them in my incubator or put them under a hen. Now if I had like a a ton of chickens and got you know dozens and dozens and dozens of eggs a day I would not have to do that but it takes me a good week or so to get a good clutch of eggs to put in my incubator since I only have like a few hens in each flock. So I normally will collect for seven to 10 days and then I'll put them in my incubator. The fertility rate starts to drop as the eggs age. I just keep my eggs in an egg carton on the kitchen counter pointed and down because you want the fat part up. The fat part, which is the blunt like side of the egg has an air pocket in between the inner and the outer shell membrane. And keeping that air pocket at the top helps keep the yolk centered in the egg, which helps prevent the air pocket from rupturing and causing your eggs to spoil. Even storing your eggs in general, you want to store your eggs pointed and down because they will last longer that way. And when I start collecting my eggs, I always write down the day I started collecting. That way I know exactly how old the oldest egg is. And then I'll write down like what breed I started collecting on what day. And I always write down in my planner the day I set the eggs, the day I started collecting and all of that. Now, once you're a few days into collecting your eggs or I would say a few days before you set your eggs I would go ahead and turn on your incubator to make sure that your incubator has time to make sure everything is working properly make sure your temperature and everything is stable especially if this is your first time you want those few days to really know how to work your incubator and everything normal chicken eggs take 21 days from start to finish to hatch really small bantams only take like 19 or 20 days to hatch but ducks are like 27 to 31 days. It all depends on what kind of eggs you're incubating. Throughout your entire incubation process, I know at least with chickens and ducks, you want your temperature to be at 99.5 degrees Fahrenheit. This is during the entire process and most incubators are already preset to that. And the humidity depends on your climate and where you have your incubator at and all kinds of stuff. I know 50, 55% is like the kind of go-to humidity during the first 18 days of incubation. We'll talk about the last three days in a minute. You kind of have to play around with it. They don't hatch at all, but they developed. Your humidity was probably too high. So you just kind of have to play around with it. But in my experience, I would set it on like 45 to 55 during the first 18 days of incubation. But your climate is going to affect the humidity also. Whenever I first turn on my incubator, I don't put any water in it because I want to see where the humidity like gets up to without me adding water to it. Normally, since I live in Florida, it's almost at 30% already. But the last three days of incubation, which will be day 19, 20, and 21, that is your lockdown period. So your eggs are going to be getting ready to hatch. During those last three days, you want your humidity to be like 65 to 75%. In my experience, it's just what I like to have it at because that membrane that your chick has to peck through to hatch needs to soften. Otherwise, they're not going to be able to peck through it or it will get stuck to their body and they'll get stuck in the egg. That is a common problem that you see with hatching. Now you don't want the humidity high throughout the entire process because it can make the chicks develop too fast. It can cause leg problems and all kinds of stuff. Um, it can drown your chick inside the egg. Now since your bantam chickens don't take as long to hatch, your lockdown period starts at day 16 I believe. So, yeah because they only take 19 days to hatch. In my experience, duck Ducks need higher humidity during lockdown. So I like to keep it, you know, closer to, you know, 72, 75% with my ducks. It kind of varies with each incubator how you put the water in. But I really like to have like a turkey baster or a syringe on hand in case I added too much water and I need to take some water out. You want to be able to easily get the water out of your incubator without having to, you know, move all of your eggs and everything. And you do not want to put your incubator where the temperature is changing a lot because the outside temperature and outside humidity will affect the incubator and the eggs and you don't want the temperature and everything fluctuating a whole bunch. You don't want to put it by a window where the temperature keeps changing or by like a stove or something like that. And most incubators have automatic egg turners 
built into them or your hen will turn her own eggs herself. If you have an incubator that has an automatic egg turner, your incubator will probably turn the eggs every two hours, I believe. But if you have to manually do it and your incubator will not do it, you want to do it at least three times a day. Five or six times is better. This is just going to help the chick from not sticking to the shell on the inside. So once you have your incubator stable and is ready to put the eggs in, once you set your eggs, you don't really do anything. You want to make sure that your humidity and your temperature stays stable. Having a really good incubator is really important with making sure that your temperature and humidity stays stable. In some incubators, it's super high maintenance and then in some, it is not. You do not want to keep opening your incubator. I know that a lot of the times when you're first getting started, you get super like anxious and you keep opening it, looking at the eggs, seeing if they're developing but you have to leave them alone because you don't want the temperature and the humidity changing a whole bunch. So I do not touch the eggs until a week later when I candle them, which is gonna be my next video. I'm gonna be showing y'all the eggs that have developed, what infertile eggs look like, what embryos look like that did not make it. I'll be showing y'all all of that in my next video. And candling your eggs is kind of like an ultrasound where you can look inside of your egg with an egg candler or a flashlight. It's super, super cool. You can see the baby's heartbeat and the veining and everything. I absolutely love doing it and I get so excited every single time. So be sure you follow along, have on your post notifications, and you can also follow me on Instagram and like our Facebook page for behind the scenes. So yeah, I hope that y'all enjoyed this video and found it helpful and you're super excited to go along with hatching a clutch of eggs with me. I'm going to have today's notification shout out up there on this screen. And today's notification shout out goes to Simply Mini Farm Life. And they said, love your Bible verses. I rang the notification bell. The rabbits are adorable. Where did you find your lavenders? Just wondering because I'm looking all over. Um, yeah, the lavenders are difficult too fun and they are definitely some of my favorites. I got our Lavender Orpingtons from a local couple and I don't even remember their names. I got the Lavender Orpingtons years ago and I wish I remembered their names because they have like really high quality birds. If you're gonna order them, I would recommend ordering from Myers Hatchery if you don't really have anybody local. And thank you so very much. Um, I appreciate you and your support. I thank y'all so very much for watching and I'll see y'all really soon with another video. Bye.